Hello everyone, this is Victor Momo and in this video I show you how to fix numbers that have a trailing minus sign. So what do I mean? The minus sign as we know it is typically leading meaning that it precedes the numbers like in minus 71 or minus 100 but there are times you get data imported from some software and when it comes into Excel, maybe because of compatibility issues, you have it reversed and you see 71 minus 100 minus. You obviously can't perform a mathematical operation on this. For example, if you try alt equals auto sum, you can see it doesn't pick it, right? And it gives you zero. You try it here, alt equals, you see the difference, right? So it means that before you can get to use these numbers, you must be able to convert them. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few methods. It's not exhaustive, but just some ways in which you can approach it. So the first one I have here is a case where I have all numbers having, you know, the uh, trailing minus sign. And I want to convert all of them. So using a formula. So in this case, I really don't need to check if it has a trailing minus or if it doesn't because, I mean, I know, you know, um, they all have trailing minus signs. So what I'm just going to do here is very simple. It means that if I can pick every character in here except the last character, you know, that's the number I need and I can just multiply by minus one. So I mean, if I have three characters in here, if I pick two, of course, the third character being the sign, if I pick two, then I would have picked the numbers. I can multiply by minus one. So it means I need to use something like left so that I can pick characters starting from the left. I will introduce a len in there. Len tells me the length of the string, you know, and I can just subtract one from it. So let's see how that works. You can just do equals to left. Here is your text. Number of characters. Because you really don't know, some numbers could have, you know, could be three digits, four digits and all. So rather than hard coding, what you do for your number of characters is just get the length, which is len of this. Of course, if you evaluate this, it should give you three because you have seven, one and the minus sign. So you press F9. So you can see the three over there, right? So once you have that, just less that by one. So that rather than picking three characters, you're picking two. That should give you 71. Okay? So all you then need to do is just introduce your minus sign. There. Some people could say minus one multiplied by that, but you could just put the minus. Okay? And you've corrected all of them. Fair enough, right? So let's go to another example. And this time, we have a mix of... Um, you know, numbers without trailing minus signs and, you know, some of them having trailing minus. So what you want to do in this case is 20. You want to leave it alone, right? 1, 2, 2 minus, you need to convert it. So in this case, I'm going to use a simple formula, which is really just an if to check. Does it have a minus sign? If it has a minus as the last character, then it means it needs a conversion. If it doesn't, then it's fine the way it is, right? So it means I check here now, for example, I check from the right, the first character from the right, which is the last character. I check if that character is a hyphen. If it's a hyphen, then I need to fix the problem. If it isn't a hyphen, then, you know, it's fine. So how do we go about that? Simple. We're going to use the if, and we're going to introduce a few functions in there. So here, I'll do equals to if, so what's my logical test? I check the right of this cell. Number of characters, of course, I say comma one. But one thing we know about the right function is that the default for the number of characters is one, meaning that if you give it one or you leave it, you can see that the number of characters is in square brackets, meaning it's an optional argument. So I can leave it this way. It knows that I mean, you know, one character from the right. You can check what this is. Evaluate F9. So you see zero. That's the last character or the first character from the right. So it works whether you put the one or not. So if the right is a hyphen, okay, then it means that, you know, we need to make a conversion. So what do we need to do if the right is a hyphen? It means that 
we need to get rid of the hyphen and just pick every other thing before the hyphen, which is similar to the formula we had over at the other end. So which is really, you pick from the left, right, your text, your number of characters is going to be the length of the string less one. Why? Because you don't want to pick the minus at the end. So you pick every other thing except, you know, the minus. So once you do that, you can just put your minus there. So this should cater for numbers that have the hyphen at the end. Otherwise, you just pick, you know, what you have. If this is formatted as a number or not, you know, it, it may or may not work. So what you could do is you could just do maybe like a plus zero or you could use the value function just to convert, you know, number stored as text to number. But this should be fine. Okay. And then you take this down and you see we have everything we want. Okay. So that's one way to fix it with a formula. There's another way to fix it with another formula. Credit for this formula goes to Rick Rothstein, you know, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but he's a great MVP, I admire a lot. Um, I'm going to skip this for now, you know, go to the next method and show you. We can use flash fill. So same problem, same set of numbers. So if you want to use flash fill, what you need to do is you just need to give Excel a pattern. Once it can sense the pattern, it can execute it. But the problem is, if you look at this now, 20 may not be the most representative example here because if I come here and I write 20 and I tell Excel to fill based on, you know, that, it probably may get it wrong, you know. So you see what it's doing <laughs> because it just feels like you repeated what you had. You had 20, you put 20 again. So what Excel has done with flash fill is just to repeat all the entries, but that's not what you want. So for this, what you probably want to do is you can give it 20 first. For the 1 to 2 minus, you tell it you want minus 1 to 2. So this should then give it, you know, an idea of the pattern, right? So what you do is to select these two cells and every other cell down to the end. So I'm just going to do a little trick. I come here, I press Control down, I move right by once, I press Control shift up. I make sure I select both the 20 and the minus 1 to 2. Then I can then do my flash fill, right? Your flash fill is Control E. So once you press Control E, it does the flash fill. And you can see that it got it right. So it's converted all numbers with trailing minus to having leading minus signs. And any number that doesn't have a minus sign remains the same. So excellent. So flash fill is another way to do it. So let's go to the last method I want to show in this video. Text to columns. Who would have thought? Because once you think text to columns, you're always thinking, oh, is it that there's a delimiter I'm doing a fix with? Well, none of them would work in this case, right? So, but there's a hidden button somewhere in, you know, text to columns that just helps you fix this whole problem. So let's give it a shot. I select my data, control shift down. To go to text to columns, I can do alt A, E, alt D, E, or I go to the data tab and I just do what? Text to columns. Okay. Here, I can move Not doing anything here because I really aren't splitting by a delimiter, right? I move next. So this is where the trick happens. Once we get here, typically we just press finish or just change our destination and we finish. But in here, advanced, which we hardly ever go into, is where it all lies. In here, you see this checkbox. It says trailing minus for negative numbers. Just make sure this is checked. Go in there, check it, do OK. Once you do that, I just change my destination so that I don't overwrite my data. And that would be all. QED. And this is probably, you know, <laughs> my preferred method. Why? Because it's the most non-obvious, you know, approach to it. The others are kind of, you know, maybe known to a lot of people, but this is the not so obvious one. And uh, those are just like three or four ways in which you can um, solve you know, the trailing minus problem. If you had it in multiple columns, multiple rows, you know, like a range of cells, you know, uh, most of these methods may not be the best approaches because text to columns, we have to go column by column. 
you know formulas you can do that drag to the right copy paste as values or you could use a simple macro which executes you know what um we just did with the text to columns and it can fix that in seconds so i hope you know you've um, learned something here on how to fix you know numbers having a trading minus i'm sure some of you may have encountered it in you know your real work so one of these methods should you know resolve your problem so like i always say if you can think it excel can probably do it um, if you like what you've seen you can subscribe to the channel excel moments you can also hit the like button it never hurts to do so right take care